In the headlines, major upset in Zamfara as PDP candidate on seats Governor Bello Matawale. Ex-terrorist negotiator Tukurmamu arraigned over 10-count charges for terrorism financing. Central Bank of Nigeria increases interest rate to 18%. And on the foreign scene, Ethiopia rejects U.S. war crime allegations as inflammatory. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Hussaina Usman. Now the news in detail. Governor of Zonfara State, Bello Matawale, has lost his re-election bid after the Independent National Electoral Commission declared the People's Democratic Party candidate, Dauda Lawaldere, as winner of the governorship election with a total of 377,726 votes. Governor Matawale of the All Progressives Congress scored 311,976 votes. INEC returning officer Professor Kasimu Shehu of the Federal University Burning Kebi, Kebi State, made the declaration in Gusau. I, Professor Kasimu Shehu, hereby certify that I am the returning officer for the 2023 Zamfara State Governorship election held on the 18th day of March 2023. The election was contested. The candidate received the following votes. Lawal Dauda, male of political party PDP, scored 377726. Three seven 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 two six. Lawal Dauda of political party PDP, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Thank you. INEC has declared candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Ubasani, winner of the governorship election in Kaduna State. The returning officer for Kaduna State and vice chancellor of the Usman Dunfordio University, Sokoto, Professor Lowell Suleiman Bilbis, said Sani polled a total of 730,002 votes, and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Isa Ashuru, followed with 719,196 votes. The Labour Party candidate, Jonathan Asake, came a distant third after polling 58,283 votes, while the New Nigeria People's Party candidate, Suleiman Hunkui, scored 21,405 votes. The report. The collation of the results from the 23 local government areas of Kaduna State went for two days after the election on Saturday. The state returning officer Professor Lowell Suleiman Bilbis declared the winner. The brilliant use of ADP 4141, Sani Uba of APC 7300002, via Andrew Abui of Abga 1471, Sake Jonathan of LP 58283, Osman Hudi Suleiman of NNPP. 21405, Mohammed Ajum Isa of PDT 719196, that Sani Oba of APC having satisfied the requirement of law is hereby declared as the winner. Thank you. The agent of the PDP, Anjuma Sarki, declined to sign the final results. Totally reject this result because it's not a true reflection of the mandate of the people of Kaduna State as expressed 
in the various polling units across the state on the 18th of uh, March 2003. Just like you can see, after the depression of the revolt, this place became like a graveyard. People are not celebrating. It's very unusual for you to declare a result of governance in Kaduna State, and people are genuinely they are not donating. So I think we are going to, uh, our lawyers are going to sit down and look at uh, the issues, and from there we we'll approach the appropriate Okay, uh, uh, court in order to seek redress. Yeah, our candidate and our party will have fulfilled all the requirements of the law to be returned elected. We have gotten more than 35% in all uh, the 15 local government of the United States. This shows the popularity of our candidate. This shows the acceptance of our party. This shows the acceptance of our APC government in Kaduna State. So we are very happy, we are satisfied, and we thank uh, INEC for conducting free, fair, and credible elections. Prior to the final declaration of the result, PDP Chairman Felix Hayat addressed a press conference where he faulted the collation process, alleging that their candidate won the election. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. The People's Democratic Party governorship candidate, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Agbu Kefas, has been declared the winner of Taraba State governorship election. Declaring results of the election at 12.05 a.m. Tuesday in Jalingo, the state returning officer, Professor Ahmed Mohammed Abdulaziz, said Agbu Kefas scored 257,926 votes to emerge winner of the election. The New Nigeria People's Party governorship candidate, Professor Sani Yahaya, came second with a total number of 202,277 votes, while the All Progressives Congress governorship candidate, Senator Emmanuel Bocha, scored 142,562 votes to come third. The PDP governorship candidate won in 11 local government areas out of 16 local government areas of the state. I, Professor M. A. Abdulaziz, the Vice Chancellor of Abaka Tapabale University, Bochi, hereby certify that I am the returning officer for the 2023 Taraba State Governorship election held on the 18th day of March 2023. The election was contested. The candidate received the following votes Haman Mohammed Mbali. A party, 234 votes, 234. Gambo Abakar Sadiq, AA, 1046, 1046. Joel David Charima, AAC. 222 votes. Mohammed A. Ibrahim, ADC, 781 votes. Mohammed Haman Abakar, ADP, 995 votes. The All Progressives uh, Congress in Kano State has rejected the governorship election outcome which produced NNPP candidate Abba Kabir as winner. Addressing a news conference in Kano, legal advisor and chieftains of the party gave the Independence National Electoral Commission a seven-day ultimatum to review the declaration of the election results insisting that the margin of victory is insufficient in view of the numbers of registered voters in areas where election was cancelled. The accused, the state resident electoral commissioner and the returning officer of not working in accordance with the Electoral Act and INEC guidelines. Whenever the disenfranchised voters who have collected their permanent voters card, that is CDC, outweigh the margin of win between the candidate with the highest number of ballot votes cast and his runner-up. The commission will declare the said election as inconclusive. We therefore condemn in strong terms 
and vehemently reject the wrongful declaration and return of Abba Kabir Yusuf as the winner of the election by the returning officer. So I may be forced to ask, and you also join me to ask Ayelet, why was it that in the case of the federal constituency decision that they counted on bowling units cancelled as a result of violence and emergencies? It counted. It worked in that direction. But when we now came to judge on our gubernatorial calculations and gubernatorial declaration, the INAP now came up with what they said is contained in the manual that cancellations based or arising from emergencies and violences can no longer be counted as reason to define the lead of margin. Still on the declaration of results, the plateau state governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Nentawi Yelwadda, has rejected the outcome of the just concluded governorship election in the state. The APC candidate lost to Caleb Mutfwang of the PDP, who scored the highest votes cast in the Saturday governorship election. Yelwadda disclosed this on Monday. Uh, evening while addressing party supporters in Joss, alleging that PDP had rigged the election in some areas which he believes can be rejected by the court. The APC candidate, however, called on his supporters to remain calm as he seeks legal redress. <laughs> As you say in reporting our, in our books, we didn't look anywhere. In two local government, it gave a difference of 400,000. Yes. And we knew it was rich. Yes. We reported low water turnout, and yet the vote increased by over 30%. So how can low water turnout turn out to be high vote turnout? Mm. We, we challenge it. We have rivers, records. Yes. What happened to the water? For the other house, you know, the other house are right. We are we can't lose the battle and the war at the same time. Maybe mm -hmm. we lost the battle, but mm -hmm. not the war. Oh, yes. Yes. Sure, the war will win it. Wow. Yes. Yes. So don't be strong. No insult, no fight with your media, no insult body, be civil. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. No insult, no fighting. If they insult you, turn love back to them. Mm -hmm. will conquer or love conquers all, I will conquer it all once more. Mm -hmm. So don't get discouraged. Yes. Stand by our mind then, and we stand by our mind then. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So, no on this Monday, on this we stand. On this Monday, we stand. The new Nigeria People's Party governorship candidate in Taraba State, Muhammad Yahaya, has rejected the Taraba governorship election results declared by INEC. This is even as the All Progressives Congress governorship candidate, Senator Emmanuel Bocha, has congratulated Agbu Kefas of the PDP, who was declared winner of the election by INEC. Sanya Hayawa, reacting to the governorship election results declared by INEC during a press conference in Jalingo, said the result was not what was actually recorded in the field. He said he won the election, but the results was manipulated, adding that people of the state know that it was the NNPP that actually won the election, but the party was robbed of its victory. The NNPP candidate disclosed that he will challenge the results declared by INEC in court, pointing out the legal process to reclaim his victory has started. The governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Bauchi State, Baba Sadiq Abubakar, says the process that produced the PDP candidate as winner was characterized by electoral irregularities. Abubakar, who stated this while reacting to the outcome of the poll at a press conference, said the election was far from free and fair. The APC candidate, who specifically said the process was marred by destruction of electoral materials, attacks on its party agents, alleged overvoting, among others, 
also said his party will come out with its next line of action in the days ahead and charged his supporters to remain calm. Apart from the intimidation and harassment of APC, <coughs> members in coalition centers and pulling units, we also saw the use of primitive violence in at least some local government areas. Merging local government area, there was violence and destruction of electronic material. The video is out there for everybody to see. APC supporters were harassed and intimidated and attacked. That prevented so many of our members from coming to cast their votes. Therefore, what came out of World G was not a reflection of what the people of World G wanted. Honestly, there's absolutely no credibility in what transferred or certainly in Bauchi State. I can tell you that. Because we have been monitoring every incident. Independent National Electoral Commission has declared BTP candidate Simin Alai Fubora uh, winner of Saturday's governorship election in River State. Professor Akbofure Rimiruke, the state returning officer, said that PDP scored 302,614 votes. He's followed by APC candidate Tony Cole with 95,274 votes and SDP's Magnus Abe with uh, 46,981 votes. Tension is easing across states as the Independent National Electoral Commission releases more results. Among those re released are outcomes of rescheduled National Assembly polls held alongside elections on March 18. The report. In Delta State, the governorship candidate of People's Democratic Party, PDP, Sharif Obolowori, polled 360,000 234 votes to emerge winner. Deputy Senate President and candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Ovi Omo Agege, polled 240,299 to come second, while Ken Pella of the Labour Party polled 48,047 votes to come third. I, Professor Ounari Abraham Jodwell, Hereby certify that Oro Revori Sheriff Francis Ore Wendo of the PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. In Cross River State, the governorship candidate of All Progressive Congress, Prince Bati Edit, won 15 of the 18 local government areas to emerge winner. He defeated incumbent senator for Cross River Central, Sandy Ono, of the People's Democratic Party to emerge winner. In Eboin, the candidate of All Progressive Congress, APC, has been declared the winner of the March 18th governorship election in the state. Declaring the result at the Independent National Electoral Commission INX State Headquarters, in Abakaliki, the state returning officer, Charles Igwe, said Inwifuru has a total of 199,131 votes cast across the 13 local government areas of the state. In Abia State, Alex Oti of the Labour Party has won a total of 10 out of the 16 local government area results so far declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC before the commission suspended coalition of the Abia governorship election. OT polled a total of 171,747 votes, while OK Ahiwe of the People's Democratic Party PDP scored a total of 79,477 votes after winning five local government areas. In Enugu State, the Independent National Electoral Commission has also suspended coalition of results due to irregularities. Proud to the suspension, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Enugu State, Peter Mba, had won nine out of the 17 local government areas already announced. 
A federal high court in Abuja has reserved ruling on a bail application by self-acclaimed terrorist negotiator Tukur Mamu, who was arraigned before the court by the federal government through the Department for State Security. Mamu is facing 10 counts charges bordering on collection of ransom from the victims of the Kaduna-bound ill-fated train abduction in both foreign and local currencies. Trustee Ms. Shafi Suleiman reports. At the resume hearing, counsel for the accused Mohammed Indanusa's son argued his motion for bail which he told the court to enable his client travel out of the country for a medical surgery. But prosecution counsel A.M. Dalami vehemently opposed the application on the grounds that such ailments can be treated locally. The accused Tukur Mamu was said to have collected ransom at different instances from victims of the Kaduna bound train abduction region from $420,000 to 21 million naira, which was allegedly found at his residence in Kaduna. Trial Judge Justice Inyang Eku has reserved ruling on the bail application on a date to be communicated to parties, just as he remanded the accused to DSS custody pending the next hearing. Zainab Garaye, Trust TV News, Abuja. We apologize for that mix-up, but that was the voice of Zainab Garaye. You're still watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. We take a look at the imperative of tree planting. Stay with us. Content creator, Trust TV is calling for entries for a short documentary and skit competition. To qualify for this entry, send your short documentary or skit of not more than five minutes on health or any social related issues to creatives at trusttv.com. Using this format, title, duration, first name, phone number, and a summary of the production of not more than one paragraph. Winners will be engaged for production for Trust TV, and prizes will be won by the overall winner and the first and second runner-up. Opens from 19th March 2023 to 31st March 2023. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust News Update, a recap of our top stories. We told you that major upset in Zamfara as PDP candidate on seats Governor Bello Matawele. We also told you that ex-terrorist negotiator Tukur Mamu arraigned over 10 counts charges for terrorism financing. Moving to other stories, the House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Transport and other relevant committees to investigate the incessant train mishaps leading to loss of lives and properties in the country. This follows the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance moved by Unyime Idem of PDP, a bomb state, on Tuesday. Presenting the motion, Idem said the series of train accidents recorded in this country have claimed lives and properties. He, however, lamented that in spite of the unfortunate incidents, which he said are as a result of the carelessness of some individuals, no one has ever been held to account for the unfortunate loss of lives. The House therefore mandated the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau to investigate the causes of the various train incidences. It further mandated its relevant committees to ensure compliance and report to the House in three weeks. Tuesday, 21st of April, is International Day of Forest, set aside by the United Nations to highlight the significance and importance of forest to man with the theme Forest and Health. Noel Samson reports that more than 1.6 billion people across the globe are directly dependent on forests for food, medicines, shelter and energy, among others. The report. The 21st of March, the United Nations marks the International Day of Forest, to commemorate the green cover around and retreat its importance in the world. The day serves as a reminder of the vital role that forests play in our daily lives, as these are homes to all forms of wildlife and provide sustenance to communities around the world. Climate change advocates in Nigeria have joined the rest of the world to celebrate the day by engaging on tree planting outreach campaigns across secondary schools in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Uh, we thought it's important for us to 
uh, as an organization to not just help journalists, you know, to report issues around forest, uh, deforestation and the likes, but to also work the talk. And that's why we are doing this for the third year in a row, um, you know, you know uh, to help plant trees, e educate young people, especially secondary school students, to learn about the importance of forest, uh, the need to be intentional about protecting the environment, and also to let them know why uh, the reason why we have uh, you know an unusual weather pattern uh, will be because of climate change and if we really want to reverse things back to default or to to get things to be uh, to be sustainable to get the environment to be sustainable then uh, we need to be intentional and planting trees is one of the many ways that we can play our part and that's what we are doing here today so celebrating the international day of forest is is very important is very critical especially forest plays a major part in addressing climate change issue. The climate change advocate called on younger generations to be part of this noble cause to ensure a safe and conducive environment for all as healthy forests will bring healthy people. Some of these schools appreciated the gestures where they retreated the importance of protecting forests from destruction. Planting trees, having trees around us creates a lot of healthy environment around us too. So the students that have been uh, giving this information this morning, I'm sure they will tell other students that are not here. And not only that, they will inform their parents at home, they will inform their siblings, and the advantage of, uh, of planting trees. I plan to put this in practice when I have the opportunities to. If anything, I will try and plant more trees around my houses or any other place I notice that like trees are lacking in that place. Plus, I will try to encourage people about the importance of this. Planting a plant is good for the environment, also for climate change. It is important to know forest sustainable management and use of resources are key to combating climate change and can contribute to prosperity and well-being of current and future generations. Noel Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. In business, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has voted to increase the benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points to 18%. The CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele disclosed this while reading the communique of the second MPC meeting of the year on Tuesday. Addressing journalists at the end of the two-day meeting in Abuja, Emefiele said the committee voted to keep the asymmetric corridor at 100 and negative 500 basis points around the NPR. He said the slight increase is to mitigate the effect of inflation and other economic issues. The NPR has since been on the rise uh, since April 2022 when it was 11.50%. And away from Nigeria, the Ethiopian government has accused the United States of taking a partisan approach by alleging that its forces and uh, Eritrean troops had committed war crimes during the two-year conflict in Tigray. The foreign ministry said in a statement on Tuesday that the U.S. statement is inflammatory. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.